They are the harbingers of chaos. They want to destroy everything in Ravnica and start anew. They are the Gruul clans. So the Gruul clans are fascinating in that this is a, Ravnica is a, you know, the plane spanning city. And in that, or in, in this world, the Gruul hate, hate urban life. They see the, the city as making people, or they see civilization itself as making people weak um, and subservient. And so the gruel, they're a whole, they are just antithetical to everything civilization. Um, they are the anarchists that occupy um, you know, the ruined parts of the city or the kind of these, these places that have been overgrown with, with wilderness and abandoned. That's where the gruel will thrive. Um, those places collectively are called, known as the rubble belt. And from there, they will attack civilization. They will attack, you know, they, a gruel riot may kind of surge through the streets of Ravnica. And now it takes, you know, maybe the Azorius or the Boros have to stop them. But if le left to their own devices, they will literally tear down, you know, tear down the buildings and bring the whole city uh, down on itself. Who, who, who does this appeal to? <laughs> uh, this appeals to me. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? No, I, I just love the gruel. Uh, one of the things about D&D &D is... Uh, Playing characters, playing roles you don't get to, you don't get to. We live in a civilization. So being able to just kind of just smash is sometimes really fun. Um, the gruel, even though they are about smashing, there's a, there's a philosophy that kind of, um, that permeates their guild as well. So there's this concept of the old ways. And it is this kind of primal force that imbues all wild things. And they believe civilization has really just restrained all of that. And in order to get to kind of the true state, it is to destroy civilization. Um, so it appeals to people or uh, characters in world. It appeals to people who have been marginalized by society. It appeals to people who, who don't want to, you know, who don't want to sit in a cube all day long and, you know, do, do work. And um, yeah, it just, there is a, there is the fantasy of being able to just, you know, just Kind of unleash when you're uh, when you're with the gruel. Although magic players will know that unleash was a Rakdos mechanic, but um, uh, to basically just kind of you could you could you know stick it to society um, and you get to just kind of live unencumbered by by any of the mores of of civilization. To most other guilds, the gruel are the most overt threat. Um, they are literally the barbarians at the gate, especially to the Azorius who believe that chaos is. The end of civilization. I mean, the gruel are that thing, and so um, the, some of the races that are that are attracted to uh, the gruel are there are humans because there are humans essentially in every guild. Um, you have goblins that are that are drawn drawn there as well, um, and uh, we we have a playable race of centaurs. That there are a lot of centaurs in uh, in the gruel. Minotaurs uh, will as well occasionally, um, and the gruel or the the gruel clans are filled also with things like ogres and giants and other more kind of monstrous uh, type of, uh, of creatures. Uh, one thing to note about the Gruul is that they're not like a unified structure. There's not the Gruul clan. They're called the Gruul clans plural because uh, there are basically different chiefs that have created their own little, uh, little groups. And uh, people in the gruel tend to follow the strongest, and so each one of these chiefs have become the strongest in their own group. Um, there is uh, there is a leader of the guild, but it's not because they're officially the leader. There is a big cyclops named Borborygmos who has basically earned the respect of all the different chiefs, and therefore kind of the de facto leader. Thank you, Ari Levitz, for talking about the gruel clans in the Guildmaster's Guide for Avnica. You can buy that book on dndbeyond.com. I'm Ty Kenrick. Thank you for watching.